So we have learned all four of our differentiation techniques here. And so what we're going to do with them now is we're going to start using them on more complicated examples. So by that, let me just show you the example that I'm talking about. So in this example, we have f of x is equal to 3 over square root of x plus 8 times the fifth root of x cubed minus e to the first power. And we want to take the derivative of this. And you're probably telling me right now, well, we don't know how. We didn't learn any of those rules yet. We don't know how to take the derivative of fractions, and we don't know how to take the derivative of roots. Well, technically, no, I did not specify fractions and roots individually, but we can actually take the derivative of these using our four shortcuts that we learned at this time. All we need to do is we need to manipulate the problem so we can get it into the process that we know how to handle. So in our example for today's assignment, what you need to do is you need to put it in the format of a constant times x to some power plus or minus a constant times x to some power, plus or minus a constant times x to some power, and so on and so forth. If you can get it in this format, then you can take the derivative of it using what we know up until this point. And we can actually get this example here into this format. But before we talk about this one specifically, let's go back and let's review how we can manipulate fractions and roots and put it into our format that we want it to be in. So we have to go back and we have to review some of our properties from college algebra. Okay, the first thing is, is if we have a negative exponent, that's what I like to call is a bad attitude in my, in my class. If they have a bad attitude, then I don't want them on the same floor as me. So the way that we get rid of that bad attitude is we move them to the opposite floor. So if this is in the numerator, I can make it look like it's in the numerator. I'm going to move it to the denominator. Notice it does not have a negative exponent or it does not have a bad attitude anymore. Now that's the way that we manipulated it in college algebra when we went from our negative exponent to a fraction. Here in this class, we're most likely going to have to take it from a fraction and write it into a bad attitude or a negative exponent. Because remember, we want to put things as an x to some power. So this is the way we can do that. The other way that we can rewrite things as exponents is from radicals or from roots. If we have the nth root of x to the nth power, then we can rewrite this as x to the n divided by m. So note that m is the denominator, and that is the same thing as the root there. So the, whatever is the root goes into the denominator of our exponent. So in these examples here, all we want to do is rewrite them, and then in the next example, we're going to take the derivative of it. So that's important to keep those two steps separate. There is going to be one step of rewriting it from fractions or roots into the power. That is algebra. That is not any derivative. And then a second step of actually deriving it. And so make sure you really stay focused on keeping those two steps separately because that is where most students make mistakes is they like to blend those two steps and then they get everything mixed up. Okay, so let's look at these examples here, and I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can rewrite them into exponent format and leave it at that without taking any derivatives. So my first one is I have the fifth root of x to the third power. I have this two out in front, but it actually stays out in front so that it is two, times x to the 3 fifths power. Whatever is in my root, it goes into my denominator. Now, I wrote times here, but most of the time we leave that off. So the simplified version of this is 2x to the 3 fifths. Okay, part B. So most people, after looking at this property over here, 
realize that this t to the fourth is going to be rewritten as t to the negative four. So I move it from my denominator to my numerator, and by doing that, I give him a negative exponent or a bad attitude. What a lot of people do mess up on is how do I handle the other numbers involved? Well, I can rewrite this a certain way, so I have to do a little bit of fraction manipulation here. So instead of having it as 3 divided by 2t to the 4th, let me rewrite it as 3 divided by 2 times 1 over t to the 4th. And I know that I can do that because that's just multiplying fractions. So if I multiply my fraction straight across, on the top, 3 times 1 gives me 3. And on the bottom, 2 times t to the 4th gives me 2t to the 4th. Now, I've already rewrote this part here. t to the 4th is rewritten as t to the negative 4th. But then my fraction part, this 3 halves, it stays as is. So we learned when that constant multiple rule, it didn't matter what format our constants came in. It can come in as a fraction, just like we see here. So this is me rewriting part B. Okay, part C. To rewrite this again, I'm going to do the exact same fraction manipulation that I did in part B. So I'm going to write it as my constants in front and then my variables in the second fraction. So I have a negative 16 in the denominator, so I'm going to put that as a 1 in the numerator since I didn't see any numbers there. And then my variable is x squared. So notice that x squared was already in the numerator, so if I wanted to put something in the denominator here, it would be 1. So now if I were to multiply these fractions straight across, it would, of course, give me what I have here. So to rewrite this in exponential notation, I just keep my constant of negative 1 over 16, and I multiply it by my variable of x squared. Notice I did not have to do any negative exponents there because my x squared was already in the numerator. So I only do a negative exponent when it moves from the denominator upstairs. He was already upstairs, so all I had to do was just rewrite him over into a unit by himself. So this is now rewritten in the format that we want it to be in, a constant times x to some power. Okay, part D. To rewrite this, we're going to actually have to take two steps. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to talk about what root I have here. Since there is no number specified, we know this to be a square root, so my number here is an assumed 2. So let me rewrite just the root over, so that gives me x to the 5 over 2 using property number 2. Now, we still don't like that format because it is in fraction format. We don't know how to take the derivative of fractions, so I need to rewrite it. I need to move him upstairs, and that gives him a bad attitude, so that is x to the negative 5 over 2. Now, that's in the format of a constant times x to some power. So, all of these are now in that format that we want it to be in, constant times x to some power. Okay. We're going to use this information then to take the derivative of that example that I showed you previously. Now recall, we're going to take two steps to get this done. My first step is just to rewrite it in the format that we want it to be in. If we rewrite it, that is not using any calculus methods. So our notation here is f of x. It's still the original function, it's just manipulated in a different way. Then, in my second step, we're going to take the derivative of it. We're going to derive it. So that's when we change it to f prime of x, and that's when we use those techniques or those shortcuts that we learned in the previous two videos. So at this point, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you come up with the right answer. Okay. My rewrite step. First, I have 3 over the square root of x, where my inside power is to the first power, and my root is 2. So that's going to be x to the 1 half, 
but since it's in the denominator, that's going to be x to the negative one-half since I move it to the numerator with my constant of 3. Plus 8, rewriting my root here, x to the 3 over 5th. Remember, whatever is in the root moves to the denominator. Minus. And then what do I do with this e to the first power? e is a number that's a lot like pi. It's one of those really weird numbers, but it is a constant in itself. So I can actually just leave that as e to the first power or as just e itself if you prefer to not write the first power. So that is me rewriting it in the constant times x to some power format that we were going for. Now, since everything's in that format, now we can derive it. We can take the derivative of it. So this is where your notation switches. This is where you use f prime of x. So I have 3 times x to the negative 1 half. I'm going to use my power rule. So I bring my power down in front, negative 1 half, x, and I subtract a power. So if I had negative 1 half and I subtract 1, rewriting it in common denominator format, that's the same thing as taking negative 1 half and subtracting 2 over 2, because that's the same version as 1. And so that gives me negative 3 halves, or negative 1 and 1 half, but we prefer the improper fraction format. Plus 8 times the derivative of x to the 3 fifths. Well, my power comes down in front, and then my base stays, and now I have to subtract a power. So I take 3 fifths minus 1, or 3 fifths minus 5 over 5, putting it in common denominator format, or that gives me negative 2 over 5. So that's my new exponent there. Last, minus e to the first power. We said that was a constant. Well, the derivative of any constant gives me 0. So there is my derivative step, where I use those techniques of differentiation or my shortcuts to derive it. Now I want to simplify it. So I have f prime of x is equal to, multiplying my constants out here, gives me negative 3 halves, x to the negative 3 halves, plus, multiplying my fraction straight across, 8 times 3 gives me 24 over 5, x to the negative 2 fifths, and I of course don't want to write my minus 0 because that's not the most simplified format. So this here is my answer. Now, notice that this did not come in the format that we started out in. In the format that we started out in, we kept it as fractions and roots. If the problem just says derive it, this is a perfectly acceptable answer. Okay. But I would get in the habit of rewriting it back to the format using denominators and roots because that might be to an advantage in some other type of problems. So to rewrite it back, remember any negative exponents move it to the denominator, and then any fractions can be rewritten as roots. So this is negative 3 in the numerator. My 2 goes in the denominator. My x is going to go in the denominator because I have negative, and it is going to be the square root of x to the third power. Plus 24 over 5. This one also goes to the denominator because it's negative, and that's the same thing as the fifth root of x squared. So this is the answer if it asks us to write it back in fraction or root format. So you're probably asking yourself, well, which format is better? Um, and it's kind of a mushu point. So if you want to take the easy route, you can always just leave it in the first format because that saves you steps of rewriting it. So if it doesn't specify, this is the answer that I would give. Now, I would get in the practice of rewriting it because this is going to be to our advantage in some other type of problem. So I would enter this in as the final answer, but for extra practice, I would be doing this as well. Okay, so we have seen how complicated these derivatives can get, not because of the differentiation techniques, but more because of the college algebra methods that we need to go back and review.